Welcome to Knife Chats. If you like this video, please take a moment to leave a comment. Thank you. Welcome back to another episode of uh, Five Random Knives. In this case, the only thing that connects these knives is they are American-made fixed blades. So let's get started. Okay, first up is the uh, Wolf Pup XL by Topps. And you can tell it's a Topps knife because it has a Topps whistle with it. Uh, almost every Topps knife you buy will have this little whistle come with it. They often have a Kydex sheath, uh, such as this, and many of the Kydex sheaths will have a, uh, um, a belt clip on the back that is actually adjustable. So this can be worn for either vertical or horizontal carry, or if you really want it, you could even do diagonal carry. It really doesn't matter. The knife holds into the sheath pretty well, and let's take a look at the knife. And it is a uh, Ulu Skinner or a Wide Belly Skinner, whatever way you want to call it. Here's the markings on there. Wolf Pup XL, you got your little Tops logo there. Um, blade length, well the, the cutting edge on the blade is three and a half inches. The knife overall is seven and a half inches long. Features uh, micarta handles with white spacers. Got some aggressive jimping down here. You got a uh, lanyard hole here. And if you notice, you have uh, little uh, torque screws holding the handles on so the handles can be removed. Um, like any top knife, this thing is really well made. It is just as solid as a rock. Nice, good, th thick blade stock. 1095 carbon steel blade. Um, nice coating on it. Um, and, while well, you know, it, it, it's a top knife. It's really well made. My only problem with the whole knife is this little bump here in the handle. So you either end up with two fingers in front or one finger in front of that bump. And one finger puts your hand too far back and two fingers really kind of jams it up there. I wish they would have just left this little indexing point off of the uh, off of the handle. And they might need that for holding it into the sheath. I'm not sure, but it just kind of annoys me a little bit when I'm holding it. Hopefully I'll get used to it. As you can tell, I have not used this knife hardly at all. I mean, I've cut up a couple cardboard box with it and... Uh, and some paper with it. I have not actually taken it out in the woods and uh, put it through any paces yet. So I'll have to do that soon. And once I do that, maybe I'll do a more um, complete review of the knife. But um, I like this style of knife. I've used uh, several others uh, of this type. And so that's why I went ahead and bought the tops. Um, I almost wish I would have bought the smaller uh, wolf pup that's only about five and a quarter inches long because it, it doesn't have that bump on the handle. But anyway, there's the Topps Wolf Pup. Let's move on to the next knife. Next up is a knife from a very underrated uh, and overlooked knife company called R. Murphy. Now the sheath is nothing to really talk about. It's a simple leather sheath, uh, stitched and riveted together. They use the same sheath for I don't know how many of their knives. Uh, this one is known as the uh, Fisherman's Pal, and it is a very classic pattern, been around forever. It's 440 stainless steel blade, and uh, here you see R. Murphy on the blade there. Uh, you've got your uh, fish scaling top on the top there, and a uh, nice flat grind down to uh, a decent enough edge on there. You can sharpen it a little bit better, and as you can tell, it is not full tang. The, the tang goes back as far as the uh, the two brass rivets who are holding uh, the, the handle in place. And um, Babinga wood handle, that's the kind of wood used in there. Now, the handle did not come with a hole drilled in it. I went and drilled the hole myself because I wanted to put a lanyard on it. And it took forever to drill through that Babinga wood because, man, that stuff is hard as a rock. And if you notice, it's got a little fish ear on there. Well, I carved that in there myself. I just felt like doing it and then I, uh, took some white paint and, and rubbed it in there and wiped it all off and everything. So that's a little accent I put on myself. I've told uh, R. Murphy they should consider putting a lanyard hole in this knife because uh, it just makes a lot more sense for them. Uh, I don't know if they'll do that or not. Eight and a half inches or thereabouts overall and that distance is split between the handle and the blade. Really good knife. I use it quite often. Um, I just like it. It's really uh, just a classic design. Works really well. Um, and we're talking about a knife that costs like $25. And uh, it does what it's supposed to do. 
and I think that's why it's overlooked because uh, the price is so low and uh, you know people are, how good could it be well uh, if you're looking for a good usable knife and you don't want to get a Walmart special and you're looking for something that's USA made consider R. Murphy um, they've got some really decent knives out there uh, and they do what they're supposed to do they're better known for oyster shuckers and stuff but man uh, their their knives are are spot on uh, and USA made at a dirt cheap price uh, nothing fancy about them but really just a great knife to be using out in the woods let's move on to the next one if you thought the fisherman's pal was a uh, a classic then uh, Let's get ready for a real classic. This one is by Camillus. It's the uh, 1013, also known as the Yellowstone. Really nice leather sheath that it came in. This one dates from back in the 60s or 70s or so. And uh, as you see here on the blade, uh, if it'll, let's see if I can get it to, there we go. Sword brand, uh, Camillus 1013 USA, uh, India stag handle wonderful heavy rivets holding that India stag in place um, I don't know if that's nickel silver or a uh, stainless steel bolster on it but just a fantastic knife uh, one of my favorites uh, by Camillus uh, 10 inches long overall 5 inch blade 5 inch handle once again split right down the middle got some good jimping there for it um, really designed for hunting and skinning and stuff but because the blade is nice and long enough you can actually use this for a decent enough camp knife too. Uh, so it can do uh, some good work with wood and such also. Uh, I really do not take this one out and use it. I bought it for my collection, but uh, I have I do use it occasionally. But this is one of those knives that you're really not going to be able to replace too often. So uh, it's really more of a showpiece for me right now. But, uh, you know, there's my Camillus 1013. India Stag Yellowstone. Let's move on to another one that uh, doesn't get too much use in the woods. Okay, we're going to switch back from uh, hunting back to fishing with the Cutco 1763. Nice uh, tube style leather sheath, uh, form fitted to it, knife will not fall out. Uh, and let's get it out of there though. Now, Cutco is a uh, owned by K-Bar or K-Bar is owned by Cutco, something like that. And uh, most people, when they hear Cutco, they think of uh, kitchen knives and stuff. Uh, but Cutco did make quite a few knives for hunting and fishing and such. And the 1763 is one of the more popular ones out there. And you see on the blade there, hopefully I can get it to show. If not, I'll take an inset picture of it. But there's a little fish in the, in the water there kind of jumping up. The handles are made of that uh, same phenolic type of plastic that they use on their uh, on their kitchenware and everything. So very easy to clean up and everything. And this is like a, a swirly plastic, so it's an injection molded in multiple colors. I believe it's a, an aluminum pommel and then an aluminum spacer up here at the top of the blade. If you notice, the blade is serrated at the bottom all along, five inches long. And then you've got your... Uh, fish scaler up along the top here of the blade of the uh, of the false sledge in the uh, in the top of the blade here and then uh, you know really not a bad little knife these are getting scarcer and scarcer harder to find and everything really a decent bait knife though great for cutting up fish and everything and um, great for scaling fish and everything so uh, and it really fits nicely in the hand especially with the notice the uh, gap here doesn't matter left right handed it doesn't matter you can get right in there and grip it good right up there on top too and uh, like the pommel there it keeps your, your knife right where you want to have it and everything but uh so there you have another great one the uh, the cut coast 1763 let's move on to the last knife here okay the last one here and it wasn't really chosen at random this is my uh mark ii fighting knife a lot of people call this a k-bar Please do not call this a K-Bar. K-Bar is a knife company. This, you can call it the Marine Corps fighting knife, or you can call it a Mark II uh, combat utility knife, whatever you want to call it. Don't call it a K-Bar. For one reason, this one, if you can see there, 
U.S. Camillus, New York. Camillus made the bulk of these also back in World War II when it got its name as a K-Bar, um, mainly because K-Bar stamped their name so tight on there on all those Marine Corps knives that everyone thought that's what the, the type of knife was. It was They thought it was like K-Ration, K-Bar, so on and so forth. Uh, at least that's one of the titles, the one thought, and no one really knew much more about it. But even back in World War II, the bulk of these were made by Camillus. Uh, the bulk of the ones that went to the Marine Corps were made by K-Bar. Um, the Navy got quite a few of these also, and some of them even went into the Army Air Force, uh, even though uh, really the, the Army Air Force was using an RH-36 uh, by uh, PAL. But uh, they also got these too because there was overflow. Um, and since then, this knife has been used by just about every service in the military at one time or another because uh, it's just one fantastic knife and it's a really good knife for combat and it's just a solid knife for any other kind of thing. 12 inches long, 7 inch blade, 5 inch handle, stacked leather handle, uh, the handle is treated so it's impervious to uh, rot and mildew and everything else so it's really well made. You've got your uh, your uh, carbon steel cross guard 1095 carbon steel blade eighth of an inch thick. This is not a false edge on the top here that is a sharp edge on top just as you have on the bottom edge there. Uh, pinned on steel pommel there uh, it just feels great in the hand. Um, this knife was given to me uh, in my senior year of high school um, by my father because I was going to be going into the Army. I ended up going in the college ROTC first before I went into the Army. So um, I played with it for four years, going doing camping and all sorts of stuff while I was in the uh, uh, college. And then uh, it went off to Germany with me while I was in the uh, Army. And so... You got to see uh, Wildflicken, Hohenfels, and Grafenwehr. I was in the peacetime army. I did not see combat or anything. I'm not going to brag about anything that I didn't do. But I was in the infantry, and I had a good time with this knife. And uh, this knife is just rock solid. A fantastic knife. Um, just a terrific tool. Uh, you can do just about anything with it. Um, they didn't tell me what I wasn't supposed to do with it, so I basically have abused this knife. I have actually cut trees down with it, using it like it was a hatchet, you know, cutting like this, pounding into the tree, and, you know, chop, 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 until bringing down trees. Uh, you know, and I'm not talking about like a two-inch sapling. I'm talking about like trees that were five inches in diameter. Um, if it was big enough for here, I cut it down, you know, using the blade here. Also cut a lot of WD-1 wire with it. Now that's a telephone wire. Put it over a line, uh, put it over a piece of uh, tree branch and whack, cutting through the wire. You know, you really probably shouldn't be cutting wire with, uh, with a knife blade like this, but I did it. Uh, blade held up well. You notice here the pommel is pinned in. Uh, no one told me that you weren't supposed to use this pommel as a hammer. So I've also, bam, bam, bam pounding in nails and everything with this pommel and the handle is still as tight as can be. The only damage really done to the handle is the damage I did myself when I carved my initials in it so no one would steal the knife. Um, just a fantastic knife. Um, I would stack it up against any other knife out there that is currently made in 1095 carbon steel. That includes the knives that Essie makes and the knives that Topps makes. This knife is just rock solid and well made after all come on let's face it it went through world war ii it went through korea it went through vietnam and it's still in service today with some people some people will still carry this knife because it is just that good of a knife it is just a fantastic knife and uh, one of my uh, favorite knives that i have and you can tell from the sheath it definitely saw some uh, time out there this sheath is uh, beat to hell also, but uh, I got to keep it with the knife. It's just really terrific. This is one of those, uh, for me, this is the priceless one. This is uh, the, the heirloom. This is the one that I definitely want to hand down to my children because, uh, I mean, come on. It, it, 
went through the army with me and it's been around for a long time so just a fantastic knife um, if you don't have a mark II fighting knife you should really have one if, if you collect fixed blade knives this is one that you should have in your collection um, not simply because uh, you know simply because well yeah simply because uh, it served the US military for so long and for so well this is just a fantastic knife and uh, its reputation there's not there's no lying about it this is just terrific like I said I would I would take it over uh, yeah I would take it over a tops I would take it over an SE um, it's just so well made yeah there you have it mark II fighting knife by uh, Camillus just uh, you know terrific beautiful knife uh, looks like a knife looks like it wins wars you know yeah just a beauty thank you so much for joining us I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of Knife Chats, and if you did, please like and share it with your friends. Comments are always welcome. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. Hope to see you soon.